with the the press, I actually I think the last person I talked to was Matt um, James about getting a press, and um, now I've got one. I think what's really cool about them is that they're really compact and really small. They may not have as much power as other presses, but uh, they do seem to make up for most uh, other specific jobs that you want to do. So when I started using it, I was a little unconvinced about how much, how little power it had, but um, it, I have another, a power hammer as well, which makes it a little bit easier to um, do other jobs. But the main reason I got this guy was so that students could uh, punch holes in uh, hammer heads. So just large sections of 45 millimeter square or 50 millimeter square. Um, I've made a really jerry-rigged cage just to test it out to see how well it works. Um, I've ordered one of their ones anyways. If you're on the ball, you can pretty much do the hole um, in one heat, which was really handy. Instead of multiple times, I'd have to use a drift tool and an anvil and maybe another person to help strike. It just makes the job really, really um, repeatable. So hence why I've got it. I've had this probably for about six months now and um, have you know got a good idea of what I do like and what I don't like about it. Um, New Zealand dollars, I paid all up around 6,700. And I know there's some very clever engineers out here who have built less, uh, built them for less, which is fine. Um, but for those that don't know anything about hydraulics myself, um, I'd really, really highly recommend, uh, recommend getting it because it's pretty damn good for the size that it is. So it won't do everything you want it to. Um, but it does most, most things pretty good. So I'm going to turn the forge on and basically squeeze a bit of mild steel through the, um, the press. Currently, I've got the drawing dies on. I kind of use the drawing dies the most. I don't really use the flat dies uh, too much. Uh, what's really cool about it is that um, it's actually funny. The company that made them, Coal Ironworks, have actually decided to slot their dies now, which allow me to turn the bolt about 180 degrees uh, and just sort of push the die out because the bolts and the dies get really hot and there's not a lot of finger room when you've got gloves on to get in there to unbolt the, uh, the thing, uh, the unbol unbolt the bolts completely from the threads. So um, I've actually just chopped them and that's fine. It's just a little easier for, yeah, changing dies out. Yeah, I'm just turn it on and everyone can have a little look at it. So I'll just go maximum speed. So that's all the way up. That's all the way down. So I'll just wait till that bit, bit of steel gets up to temperature and just quickly squeeze it down. I might just move this out of the way a little tiny bit. And for, if you're doing larger stock, that's where it starts to really, um, it doesn't work as well. Um, if you're doing very th uh, thick stuff and upsetting and it very, 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 very thin stuff, it seems to suck the heat out quite a lot as well. So um, it can do most things, as I said, not everything. Um, all, a big thing to note is you can actually have the press two different ways. I just prefer the cylinder coming down. I've got quite a tall um, bench that's on a set of caster wheels that I can wheel around. So this whole unit's very mobile. Um, I'm right-handed, so biased, I'll have this power pack sitting on the right, so when I'm working, it's just easier to do. I know some people have done a more um, in-line method where they'll have the power pack at the base of a uh, trolley, and then they have a like a set of linkages. You can basically just un like thread that knob and, you know, jerry-rig something that connects and links up the uh, main lever to a foot-powered one or something a bit closer. They started making and selling that after I bought the thing, which was like really convenient. Thanks. Um, uh, this can be a little bit top heavy. This is just for demonstration purposes. Um, I actually have this thing uh, clamped down and I will probably just weld that to the frame. They've just done this for packaging reasons so that they can slot the uh, pieces of steel in and just drop the angle iron frame uh, together. And it's made of really light steel considering its size. I mean, this is about five millimeter thick um, angle iron, and I think this stuff's about 20 mil or so. It's not thick steel and probably could be made. 
and or if you wanted to take measurements of that you can just you know try to make your own as well which is fine uh, a really important one was um, voltages which um, Ben uh, sorted out for me well wiring wise um, this runs at 230 volts as well as like 110 I think or 220 I can't remember exactly about about that um, and people were concerned about the uh, drop in the uh, or the, the change of voltage I'm not an electrician so it's fine but um, and it would make the pump and everything just run a lot slower than what it would be uh, in, in America so the voltage was a big concern me buying the thing and then finding out I've got to put like another motor on it or run it differently which um, I haven't had any issues with which is really good uh, it's about a 20 litre tank of like a 46 I uh, OSI or whatever the uh, hydraulic fluid was on there and um, yeah it's it's really light and that's with the fluid inside it as well um, this bit of steel is looking pretty hot so I'll start pressing now and doing a bit of a squash I'm just gonna munch it up I'm not really too worried I can draw the steel out as well um, oh actually one final thing I forgot to mention the dies were a little bit uneven when I got them from Cole so I emailed them back and they're sending me another set because uh, the way they have them set up when they weld them they weld one and then the other and it, what the weld must pull it in a bit on one side than the other because both dies are slightly open a bit I've modified that and grind them down a bit but they're still not perfect um, there this is just mega hot So it does squeeze it out pretty well. I think this is about, what, 20 mil thick, maybe? It's pretty thin. Um, it's really good if you want to get into making Damascus, in my opinion, because it really does crunch it down pretty quickly. Um, and it does keep a lot of the heat in the steel. But as I said before, if you get thinner steel, if I was doing half this thickness, um, I'm going to lose that heat from just constant contact with the uh, press dies. So, um, just bear that in mind. If you're trying to do really thin blacksmithy kind of stuff, it may not work that well. Pretty much the roller that Matt had was, is probably easier getting things a bit, things a bit thinner. And then uh, the press is good at sort of mid-sized stuff really. Um, so I'll squash it, I'll heat it up once more really quickly. And then I'll just call it done. Uh, this, this is good to go. I'll just uh, take it out now. I'm just going to go the other way. And for cold steel, I mean, that's kind of gone grey and it'll still Do something. Not you should be forging grey steel anyway, but yeah. <clears throat> and the main thing is it's really quiet and quite um, residential friendly, which is um, what some people that have got power hammers may have an issue with noise, which is the biggest thing because your neighbours sometimes hate you if you have a power hammer. Anyway, really quick, that's all I wanted to talk about. You can have a quick look at it closer if you want to, just be aware things are hot. 